it, it's funny we we play high school all the time like we still play high school yeah i know but we never went <laughs> you know it's like when i was on the show um <laughs> you know and i'd have lockers and i'd be in school and oh, like i always thought it was so cool it was oh, so cool I know, yeah because that was like the closest thing we had <laughs> yeah. that was the only like high school experience we had with like a fake principal and like yeah. pranks and like i used to go home and visit my sisters at high schools and i was like oh awesome you guys have lockers like, <laughs> Dude, this is your so biology cool. room and they're like yeah i fucking go in here every day yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sucks it's a miserable yeah, I time i hate it Well, well, well. Welcome I think I just back. Spiked the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Good to be back. Um, Bradley, well, did you did you ever think that you'd be in this in this position, sitting here on a couch in a studio with you, with me again, or just talking to a camera in general? Um, well, I really hoped, as uh, an actor in my life, I would talk to a camera again at no, some point. I don't think I don't even do that. I don't even do that for zooms. So I just turn my camera off. I just, <laughs> do I you just, only act? I only Zoom? do, yeah, FaceTime. I just turn off the camera. I just do audio only. Mm. Yeah, no more cameras for me. Uh, well, regardless, uh, <laughs> <laughs> after 10 months, I guess. Yep. Close to a year at this point. January of, was our last release of a podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's so long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, well, we don't know when we're going to release this one per se, but it's it's. You're been. seeing it right now, so that, that that's all that matters is that we're here in the the airspace on the tube, yeah. on Spotify, on the Apple, wherever. Yeah, and this is the genuine live first time we have recorded a podcast again together. Yeah, we we talked about it for a lot has happened in eight months, but we talked about coming back for the last like eight months. What month is it? Ten months. I don't. What if we were released? I, I guess it is ten months at least. <laughs> yeah, at least ten months. God. Let's just almost, call it a year. Okay, so months. for the last year, you know, we were talking about coming back for the last like three months. Though we were really seriously considering it, and uh, it seems like we can get back into things. Got a lot of interest from from you guys and support. And uh, again, like a lot of I don't know. I'm saying again. That's because I've written this a hundred thousand times over in my head. But we have <laughs> we we have a lot of support um, across like social media, Twitter, Instagram, and a bunch of people asking where the podcast was. And that's honestly why we're here sitting, talking to each other again. So, I mean, that really genuinely is like, it was surprising to see how many people for some reason miss. Yeah. They were like listening hey, to us do this. You guys, you guys were kind of funny sometimes on that thing that you did once a week yeah. for two months. Yeah, I loved both of those episodes. I really. That was awesome. Those 10 minutes of footage that you guys released. Yeah. But you had, I mean, how many people came up to you and said like, all hey, the time. Man. Yeah. Yeah. All the time I had people coming up and they would, you know, they would probably be like recognized for a show or something like that. And then it was like when they're leaving, they're like, Oh, by the way, I love the podcast, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was like the most like, unexpected people sometimes too, you know? Oh yeah. I know. Like adults. Yeah. People like, College kids. Yeah, a lot of college kids. I remember the kid at the US Open was like, oh, I loved you guys working together. And I was like, oh, have you heard the podcast? Like, and he was Rory, like, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Rom, please. Please, go. you're playing you're playing around at golf. What are you doing here? It's I was like, do you hear the podcast, man? Have you heard our podcast? He's like, no. Oh, I remember uh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he, didn't he say something about a podcast? Yeah. And, and then... Like, Check it out. And, and he was like, like, what? Oh, I will. He's, he'd never heard it. <laughs> yeah, no, he'd yeah, never, yeah. never seen it. I think you must have just seen it on social media. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's um, kind of rude. But we, had, yeah. How dare him? How well, dare he, him not yeah, keep Hopefully, up with he's us. listening to this, and now he knows well, we're uncomfortable about it. I guess. I guess. I guess we'll see. I don't think he remembers that moment, but maybe. But I do. Yeah. It, it was outside of the concession brain. area. I remember exactly where it was. Even didn't uh, didn't Schubert, Didn't he say like, "Hey, you guys still doing that thing?" Yeah. Yeah. I, I had like, family members come up to me. Yep. Yep. It's very strange. You had family members come up to you? Yeah, just come up to me and they were like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you doing a podcast still or no? Um, yeah, um, I don't know. It was an overwhelming explosion of people wanting uh, us to do this again. But, you know, it, it's, it's, it's reassuring because we had fun doing it. And we enjoyed doing it. Uh, there were complications in the process of starting a podcast and then, you know, scheduling things and... The strike happened. The it's strike. been a weird eight months, but yeah, we, it's uh, been ten. 
I'm going to keep saying eight because I just I go feel for like it. it's right. Yeah. It's been a weird year. It's still it's been August, a weird year. Yes. 2023. Yeah. It's still August. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but I mean, we we are just happy to be sitting here again and answering the same questions, different questions. And that was really the cool thing about like first getting into podcasting is that we had so many people ask questions we never thought of. And in some of the solo episodes we did ourselves, I feel like there was a lot of people that just asked me things I had never thought about or asked about experiences that we went through that mm. I wouldn't have revisited had we not gotten those questions and been able to talk so freely. So honestly, it's a it's a therapeutic experience in, in a way for, for both of us, at least. It is kind of first. funny, actually, that you say that because I think about like we did those some solo episodes where people sent in questions and they were asking about our time working as a kid and those responses that we saw did really well on social media and on YouTube and stuff like that. Is YouTube social media? Would you consider that social media? Social media. Okay. And the same thing. Um, The response that we saw, it was like, wow, people actually really care about this answer that we're giving, but that was genuinely just our natural response to that. It's something that we grew up, grew up in. That's totally. And we never really talked about it. No. Yeah. I mean, we make jokes about it with each other, but it's not something that we really open up about. But I mean, that's that's what we're trying to get people here to to do is sit down and talk to us about it. And I think we did a I think we did a good job of. We don't need to reflect on it. <laughs> we're just happy to be here Let's again. Just talk about how like, great we were. Well, um, I, I mean, uh, honestly, with the something that we missed really though with this show was talking to our friends while doing it. I mean, that was something that we love so much. Obviously like those solo episodes were fun. And when we talked about our experiences, that was cool. But the real root of, I think why we love doing this and what kept us going and wanting to do it again was interviewing our, our friends. And I think a lot of them had interest in, in doing it. And yeah, it's cool to, I mean, there, there's very few people in the outside of this state that, that we can relate to, uh, growing up and the, very specific backgrounds that we grew up in. It's, it's cool to have a conglomerate of people, a concentration of people in the same city that want to come out and sort of share their stories and what it was like to grow up. And hopefully, you know, we can over the next, however many episodes, if we can At least make it past eight, eight <laughs> um, you get a, a slew of people who have grown up in different environments. Uh, lots of adults or athletes or authors, Whoever wants to come. You know a lot of those. I know a lot of authors, yeah. Yeah. Uh, lo- I know John Green and sure. yeah. Cynthia Platt. Uh-huh. She she might, is she alive? I don't know. I don't know. Do you know who Cynthia Platt is? Not really. Okay. <laughs> um, lots <laughs> of authors, but uh, I mean, we, we <laughs> it would be great just to, just to get people back into the conversation. And um, that's why we're here, rebranding as... Sit and chat with Bradley. Wow, you heard it here first. Yeah, he went with it. The funny thing is, is we really hadn't come up with a name, but he just dropped it anyway. Sit and chat. That's what I think. That Um, was his decision. Live on air, even though we're not live, and we could cut that. We could cut that. But you said it, so let's go with it. Um, let's just say we're rebranding. How about that? Let's just leave it at that. And and if we don't use that name in the next thirty seconds, then um, we'll just we'll sit and chat. Sit and chat. Do you worry that anybody's gonna say shit and chat? Because I, I mean, mean sh- no shit and chat. I think you can parody. You know what I mean? Name. I think you can parody any name. No, but it's not that. It's more of like it's kind of a tough. Why wouldn't they just? Why wouldn't they? Why would they stop at shit and chat? Why wouldn't they? <laughs> st- why wouldn't they keep going to shit and chart? You know? No, but that's what I'm saying. Is like if you if you mixed up some letters in there, if you were like quickly saying, oh, oh shit and chat. I mean, sit and shit chat. chat, shit and chat. You know, shit and chat is not a great name for. A but how many podcasts are you sitting? Like, are, are you shit? Are, I'm are shat? you shitting and chatting, and charting? <laughs> How many, how many people the on the podcast say the name of their podcast? Uh, they say it a lot on Smart List. I feel like it <laughs> feel like happens often, it. right? Isn't that kind of the point? I mean, what do you, you want to talk about your name? They, I feel like they say it right away. They're like, oh, I'm happy to be here on whatever the show is called. And then they move on to the podcast. And the, Do you, you think know, the people will do that? Yes. You think somebody's going to come down and I'm, I'm so excited to be. I'm so excited to take a shit and chat yeah. with you guys. <laughs> I'm so excited to shit and shadow all over this podcast. I don't know. What's I don't the think limit of happen. poop jokes per? I think we hit it. So yeah, I think, and we we were we're not even 
more than 10 minutes into this. I don't even think we could be, no. No, there's no way. Well, what have you been up to the last 10 months? I haven't seen you once. Wow, you're really... I think that was my joke. Yeah, I know it was your joke. That's why I hit hit you with it. You you know, um, I'd like to use the the strike excuse. There's been a whole lot of... uh, Silence across across the industry. Yeah. We uh, we got hit with a writer strike in May. Yes, and then I think the actors struck almost two months later on the dot. Ju- June, July. Or July, yeah. And there was a lot. the The whole start to this year too was leading up to the writer strike because I remember uh, talking to my agent who said that normally there's like a hundred pilots or so that come in, and there's like four, like thirteen, yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, I know. I, I'm fairly certain they've been striking since the last time I worked. So yeah, I've been a striking five-year strike. Time, I think yeah. mm-hmm. is what I've noticed. I, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't worked. Oh, somebody just died right Coppers. outside. Um, I had I had a lot of family time. I got to see you traveled a lot. I did. I did. I left. Um, my my mom lives in India. You left your mom. Bought, I left my mom. Yeah, <laughs> I left the city quite some quite so many times. I feel like I went. Did we go anywhere? Um, I don't think so. Not this year. I have a family that was in Oregon and I went there a couple weeks ago to basically, it was a glorified babysitter. But when you're, there's nothing going on, it was awesome. It was like, it's just the yeah. Pacific Northwest is gorgeous. So I got to see a lot of, um, I feel like I drove too. I feel like you drove. Your oh, car. oh, that's cool. I drove, I moved into an apartment, um, in West Hollywood, never lived in the West side. And I drove from Indiana to Dallas to LA and that was one of the worst. Yeah, that sounds horrible. It's awful. Bold move saying where you live. Do you want to give out your actual address too? West Hollywood. I mean, I lived in Burbank before. Well, what are they going to go there now? Oh, you live in Woodland Hills. (gasps) How dare you? (laughs) You want to give out my social? Oh, no. They're going to have to go through the you imagine they just start knocking on doors. (laughs) Hey, are you Bradley? You Bradley? You just start a pod? You just rebrand a podcast? Yeah, yeah, I heard about your podcast that I haven't listened to yet. Yeah, I heard about shit. On your podcast. <laughs> yeah, the shit and chat. <laughs> Immediately. Um, well, the real root of this is that we want to talk to people, so we might as well get to our guest, right? No, I think we, I could, we could sit here and talk some more. I haven't talked to you on... I feel like I after know. 10 months, we've already run out of things to talk about. No, I think, first I think we're fine. But we can get into our guest, who I'm very excited to have on. Speaking of living in Burbank, um, one nope. of our guests will, will be <laughs> yeah. from there, but not... <laughs> Not this, not, not this, this one. guy. Uh, speaking of living in Los Angeles, yeah, just think, in California. I think he grew up here. We think. I don't know. I We're feel like we could him. probably easily look that up. We could probably ask him too. I think we should ask be him. here. Yeah. Um, let's let's get to it. Well, this is exciting. You're actually our first guest that we've had on this rebranded, beautiful. Nice. Yep. So anyway, oh, Jack, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, we're here with uh, Jack Griffo. Jack Griffo. It's funny because we were on uh, ri- <sighs> rivaling networks. Yeah. But we were all actually friends growing up. Yeah. Because you know? I feel like we had the same life. You know. Yeah. Same it's experience. The same, thing. same thing. I like the played out rivalry that like people had in their heads though between Nickelodeon and Disney. I feel like we kind of played off it. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean? Like we were friends, yeah. but we were like yeah. frenemies. Yeah. yeah exactly. I mean? yeah. Like yeah. we had our little our competition going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Well, thank you for coming, man. Yeah. Thanks for Appreciate having me. It. Yeah. This is actually really I love fun. you guys. It's great yeah. to be, uh, be with you. When was the last time you guys saw each other? Long time. Because we went to the gym. Years ago. It was, yeah. it, it could have been, I, I don't want to say it was pre-COVID, but was it? It might have been pre-COVID. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. PC. Like 2019? Pre-COVID. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's crazy. I know. COVID well, seems good like to have you here. You have a mustache now. I do have a mustache. You started growing it in COVID. Yeah. yeah. You grew. Yeah. I grew. Dude, were you like so psyched when you grew? Oh my god, dude! I was four eleven at sixteen. I know. Yeah. Were you really? You must have been yes. amped on our show. I was four eleven. Did you just? Did it happen? Yes. Was it like a growth spurt, like overnight, or was it like very gradual? And it you was, knew you were growing. Uh, it was significant enough that at like six months, I grew like five inches. Holy shit! I was sixteen or seventeen. I was like five four by the end of the like whatever summer after so i was like seven did you manifest it did you like think oh it totally yeah yeah can i, I ask you a question exercises. what did it make you really happy since we were working together did it make you really we'll get back to you in a <laughs> uh, did it make you really happy that you passed me in height i mean honestly i didn't think about that i was just happy that i wasn't 411 anymore yeah yeah get that. Mm, but sure. most things i think about i go how would how would bradley feel about this all of my <laughs> yeah you growing taller than yeah me. i was like hmm, <laughs> something that really peeved me yeah. well i was actually i was tall uh, I feel like when I was like 15 
and then point. everybody kept growing. And you just stopped. I, I didn't. Yeah. Grow. Mm. Yeah. You probably had the similar. Situation. Yeah, I'm not a very tall guy. We're like the same height. Yeah. Man, that sucks. No, that's fine. <laughs> did you guys run into each other at the gym, or did you? Yeah. So yeah. it's actually funny. I I well, he he direct messaged me the day after we saw each other, but I didn't think it was him because he had the little stash going, <laughs> yeah. and I saw him. He was at some machine, and I like I like crossed eyes with him. Like my yeah. my 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 view was was him for a second. Yeah, because we're the same height, so your eyes just <laughs> right. are level was right with there. me all the time. And and I and I was like, is that Bradley Perry? And then I was like, no, no, it's not. And I kept going yeah. on. And then I posted a picture from that like that little um, area, Sportsman yeah. Lodge area in Studio yeah. City with uh-huh. Equinox, and he was like, you were there, like. Yeah. Was there and I was like, "Oh, that was you, dude!" I saw you pulling in. That's how. Yeah. I, that's what you were on the phone pulling in, and I was like, "I think that's you." Just but rolling I, calls, bro. That's me. Just, yeah, that's dude. Yeah, always work calls. So, <laughs> you know? I could tell. I didn't want to interrupt. I was like, well, <laughs> "This guy's closing a big deal." <laughs> this guy's closing a big deal during the strike, man. He's the only <laughs> yeah. one working. Yeah. Well, you are working though because you're doing music. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tell us about your music. Tell us how you got into that because I've only known you as an actor my whole life. But yeah. Well, I was I was lucky enough to do a couple of indies with intern agreements while during the strike this this summer, yeah. which oh, has nice. been really cool. I did one up in Utah, a true story called Grizzly Night. It was like a bear yeah. attack. It was definitely like the most intense thing I've ever done. It was so cool. Yeah. And then I did like a screen life movie here back in here in LA called Stay at Home. That's gonna be out next year. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a really cool way to tell a story, this whole screen life thing. Mm-hmm. Um, with like Zoom calls and like security cameras and it was like this action thriller slasher teen movie it was really really cool and they sort of did that with like covid stuff too like like that was yeah of like zoom movies yeah that we figured out we could do that mm-hmm. it was very much a covid themed movie too like the whole synopsis was kind of based off of covid and stuff um so yeah i was lucky enough to do a couple movies but um my music has been doing good too like i i sort of started doing it in the pandemic um 2019 right before the pandemic i sort of started writing and i've always loved music like always loved singing and performing and you guys probably saw my instagram when i was a young kid like doing covers and stuff like that but it never really was like my passion because i got the thunder that show yeah that show i got that show and um <laughs> and uh i just sort of started going for that and um it wasn't until after the show that I really started exploring music in a, in a bigger way and started writing. And, um, and in the pandemic with 2020, I really sort of had the, had the space in my life to really go for this other thing. And I sort of started this group with my friend Tristan and he's a great guitar player. And you guys know Dallas Hart? I think I have met Dallas. I feel like you've met Dallas. He's been around a long time. And, uh, Tristan, my guitar player, was in a band with him, and I threw a big party one time at my house, and I had them play the party, like their band, and it was just such a fun night, and like we had like fire breathers and like belly oh, dancers, like a real it was like full so party, cool. yeah. Legit oh, it was party. so cool. It was like out of a movie, <laughs> and they played, and they were just so good, and Tristan was so good, and I was just meeting all of those kinds of people in that group, and. And I sort of just manifested that night. I was like, I want to be in a band with Tristan, you know, like Mm. I really like his guitar playing really spoke to me and moved me. And I was like, wow, like I would love to be in a group with him. But he was in a band with my friend Dallas. So like, what am I going to do about it? You know? And so like months later, this was 2019, um, their band kind of fizzled out. And I started going through some really hard stuff in my life. My parents broke up, which is really tough for a kid at any age. Really. Um, And I've been going through that for the past few years. And, um, I had been writing before that, but nothing really that like was super, I was passionate about that I needed to like share or release or like share to the world. And and then around that time, I started writing about this real shit in my life and stuff that actually like meant a lot to me. And I sort of started the group with, with Tristan because his band kind of fizzled out. And so all the alignment just kind of happened. And we've, me and Tristan have been in, three bands over the past three years and it's been kid baron for the past two years and just have different members like coming in and helping yeah members yeah but we've had the same group for about two years now and it's just been so fun for me like it it was never really about 
being famous or being a rock star or or trying to be anything other than me and you know I always thought that I would be an actor and that was what I was I was meant to do and I still love acting it's like my my first love and I'll always do it because it just it feels so good there's so much to learn always and I have so much fun with it but in 2022 when I started doing like club gigs um, around LA, basically like 2021, I was doing like backyard shows and just like mm -hmm. fun things with my friends and just kind of like getting my feet wet with performing and music. And then 2022, I started doing like the club shows, you know, we did the Viper Room and we did yeah. Molly Malone's, we did a couple I of these. I've been to the Viper Room, I want to go there. Oh, cool. dude, really? Yeah. Oh, you have to go. You're like, it's right around I here. Literally, I could walk there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started doing those club shows and I would get off stage and remember the first couple times I'd be like, oh, wow, like this, this is it. Like, this is what I was fucking born to do. Really? You know? yeah. 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 And I've always known that I wanted to perform and, and, and any really medium that there was that really had an avenue for me. And, you know, like I said, I still love acting, but this music thing has just really taken my attention. It's like a big adrenaline rush for like 40 minutes on stage. Like yeah. for, however long the set is, I just yeah. know that. Well, and also happy. acting is like, it's very, um, like everyone's such a critic with acting because you're playing a character, you know, you have to be believable. And it's like when you're performing and you're just like telling your own stories, like it's so much less critical because it, it, it's just like this, this is me, like take, it or, take it or leave it. Yeah. And like when I get off stage, I, I learn so much from every performance and I learn that, you know, it's hard, it's easier said than done, but like the, the most authentic version of myself I can be, the better. And every time I perform it, I learn a little bit of how to do that. And I feel like acting is similar. It, it's, it's, it's kind of the same, but it's very nuanced with acting because right. you have to like find yourself in this character, right? It's not totally you, you know? Um, but there's just no rule book with, with music. It, it feels a little less rigid, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. just like, do your thing, you know? Yeah, it's good. I was just going to say it's a constant form of expressing yourself on yeah. stage. And honestly, some people have it. Some people, it excites some people. But like if you if you go up there and you're not meant to be on stage, it's, it's pretty apparent to not only you, but the audience. So mm -hmm. yeah, if you're getting up there and, and you like it and it's speaking to you, then that's that's awesome. That speaks volumes. Well, and it's also cool, too, that you found something. I feel like, you know, for all three of us, we started at such a young age doing something so specific with acting and spent our whole lives doing that. And I think that it's, I mean, you're inherently going to be like, this is the thing I'm supposed to do for the rest of my life because you've done it so much. Mm -hmm. Even if that's not what you're really supposed to be doing or like not the thing that makes you happy. It's yeah. still like, you're always going to have that feeling in the back of your mind. Dedicated to this yeah. thing that yeah. you yeah. spent so much time doing it. So it's like now to find something new it, and exciting that makes you have that same feeling as mm -hmm. you did with acting. It's cool. But it also makes you realize too, that you are at your core performer. Right. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. Entertainer, performer. Yeah. yeah. And I think the pandemic was really a big way for a lot of us to like take a step back because, you know, from at age 13, I moved here with my mom and it had been just acting, 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 acting like this whole time, you know, I got the show and at 16 and then I did that till I was 20 and, and then the pandemic happened and, I think the pandemic happened a couple of years later and I was 22. Um, mm. And um, and it just, it, everything stopped, you know? And I had to think like, what else is there? Like other yeah. than acting. And it's like, there's a lot. Like there's so much life to live. There's like so many things to explore and so many yeah. things to do and relationships to be to be nurtured, you know? And I feel like that for me personally really is like the core of of life is relationships with like other people. Um, I feel like, you know, friends and community is like so important and something that like, like you guys know me, like I, I threw a lot of parties growing up. I yeah. loved getting people together. And, um, obviously you guys couldn't come to my parties cause you run Disney. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I was never invited. Not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, it is funny though, because it, it, did you at, go to that one party at his house where Ryan Garcia showed up? Were you there that night or no? No. You guys have been to a couple. I've been to your. I, think, I went yeah. to your Halloween party when we were like seventeen, I think. Yeah. Um, it's crazy but, how far back we all go. I know. I know. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So crazy. What I was gonna say though, it's like, uh, it, you know, along the lines of like friendships and relationships. It's acting is such a stressful and a lonely job, you mm. know, because that you go through those periods where, you know, you have a gig and I, I'm not working. You have a gig and I'm not working, and it's like, 
I'm on my own on this or it's vice versa. And everybody goes through those waves of like, well, somebody's working, the other person's not. There's never a time where it's like, acting is not a gig where you go, okay, on Fridays, we'll all get together because we finish our work week, yeah. you know, and we'll go out for drinks and we can all have fun and talk about our week. It's like, sometimes you don't want to hear about the work I'm doing or the work that you're doing. It's like, cause you're like you're going through a rough patch. Yeah. Yeah. Dry spell. Yeah. Yeah. So to like find a good group of people though, that are in your world and doing the same things that you are is it's a tough thing to do, you know, yeah. because they're always supportive even through the hard times. Yeah. 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 And so that, you know, that even if I go work or if you go work, we're going to support each other and we will be there when we get back, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just a, it's such a strange business i always viewed it as like to, to this sort of idea of like people working and you're not working like you know we've always we've all experienced that and i feel like what's kind of made it okay for me was the idea of like i think someone told me when i was younger like when you're in a group of friends and you're all actors you're in your little brat pack you know it's like everyone's taking turns you yeah. know like i wasn't working and like Noah was taking a really big turn, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and then, you know, before Noah had his big thing, I was on Thundermans and I yeah. was doing my big thing. What show yeah. did you say? Yeah. Uh, I don't even yeah, know what I'm talking about. That. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh Strike! Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just like it, it, what made it okay for me was to know that like, okay, like he's taking, it's, it's his time to shine right now. Yeah. And that, that spotlight, that limelight will, will go around. Like there's only, that's the only way it can go because it's tough to know that when you're young though, like when we're all to keep telling yourself, yeah, that. yeah. 13, 14, 15 <laughs> years old, like you, it's, it's hard to go like, Oh, I'm genuinely excited for you that you're doing that. Yeah. Now it's like, I I've seen you not work. I've seen you not work. I've, you know, I've seen you guys work. It's like now when you do get that thing, and all, I've also been in those situations. It's like you know how exciting that is, and how much that means to the what person. What the opportunity yeah. means. That it's yeah. impossible for you to be mad about it. Yeah, I, I think there's definitely frustration in every like big opportunity that someone gets. Like, oh, man, I, I wish I was in the same position. Yeah. But uh, I mean, uh, through our all of our experiences, I, I just try never to be sour in any way. Well, yeah. We also all play different like, roles yeah. too. You know, we're all very different totally. people even though like we may kind of look the same we have different uh ways of speaking we have different types of comedy we yeah. have different overall looks it's like there's certain roles that you would like to play that i would never play you know and, and we just know that so the odds of us really being at competition I against each Rudy other Giuliani. <laughs> yeah. and i'm just like i really don't want, I don't want to do that i don't uh, think we all i don't never saw you guys at audition rooms because i think you guys were working before i was yeah on on the nickelodeon show yeah. you guys had your shows before yeah. it's funny I was on kicking it while you were doing Ant Farm. What show? Yeah. So I did I one. I, I did one episode of that while you were like right across the the stage because those stages were like right yep. next to each other. But I never met you around that. I know. Time. I thought that was like. Go ahead. I never saw you in a casting office, obviously. But I mean, I'm sure. I feel like maybe after our shows, maybe we were in the ended, same one. But yeah, yeah, yeah really. that weird period where it was like. We're like, Everyone's drifting around. How about that? The idea of casting office. Going into an audition? Well, yeah. Yeah, because there really That's was. That's just gone. Have Dude, you been into one? No, I mean, like maybe twice in the past like couple years. Twice? Oh, like, I don't think I've been in for one on a first call. I haven't been on an actual audition and performed in somebody, in, in somebody, performed in front of somebody <laughs> since genuinely probably 2018. I, I mean, say. that is a huge part of it. That's the, the job, in person in impression that you give, the little small talk you make, yeah. you know. You got to woo them over. You got to woo them. Yeah. You know? And that's what, dude, like, not to sound like an old man, <laughs> but like you have like this new actors who have come in and their life is Zoom or self tapes. And it's a lot easier to get a good tape out of 50 tries mm. compared to that moment of like fuck i gotta do this one time mm -hmm. the guy in front of me just killed it i could hear them be like yeah. are you free in october and you're like <laughs> fuck i really gotta nail this thing you know you you got the sides and then you get in there and they're like you prepared all eight scenes and you're like yeah and they're like all right we're only gonna read one and two yeah like, okay cool, cool thanks i just drove down here for two hours but like that whole process that is in my head i guess that is acting you know yeah. like that's what the job is is doing that it's funny you say that because one of my first acting coaches john Aquino. i don't know if you guys ever heard of him but he <laughs> was uh name. the president of the united states on wow. cory in the house oh oh yeah shout out john yeah um but uh he told me my first acting coach he told me jack you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> he's that, like, you gotta, you gotta view the audition like the job, like just like what you're, what yeah. you're saying. You know, like that is the job. It's the harder part of the job. It is, and like as soon as you get done with that, you just gotta move on. You yeah. know, yep. and that stuck with me. Like so many things people have said over the years have really, really stuck with me like that. Well, but those bad auditions, dude. They, like you don't know with a self tape what really is a bad audition because you're like, wow, I think I got it. So you know, like I mm. think it's a good take. Mm-hmm. You send in your best take. Whereas if you go into an audition and you bomb, which we all have, you, know. you walk out of there and you're like, next, oh, yeah. I'm good. You yeah. know, like yeah. there's no world where I get this thing. It's also I mean, right before the pandemic and before all of the in-person auditions stopped, I kept getting casting assistants though. So the casting director wouldn't be there and it would still be helpful to have a casting assistant there. Like, sure. hey, this is what they're looking for, whatever. Mm-hmm. But that element of like, I'm trying to make an impression right now kind of started to die down right mm. before we stopped doing it but the process is was so much longer than it is now really of like if yeah if it was the casting assistant odds are good that, that callback and then, then you the go only be director, a casting director then the director then the director's producers then the chemistry yeah. read three different times yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i remember and going like seven calls that's when crazy. i was like 12. oh 100 percent. i think the process for um this show i did with a baby a long time ago um <laughs> I I remember I went out on an original audition, months go by, got a call back, next day go in for another thing, next day go in for another thing, and then it was like test with everybody, then the next morning we were at the table read for the pilot. And it was like that process though, it was like, now I feel like you send in a thing, they're like, yeah, we're we're sending you through to producers, and you're like, cool, let me know how it goes, you know, you don't need another tape or anything. I feel like it's either super drawn out with all the callbacks, or like cast it off tape. It's yeah. like one or the other, you know what I mean? Which is weird. I mean, it's weird, especially when it's like on tape, you're like, don't you want to meet me? Yeah. Or with a comedy, you'd be like, don't you want to meet me and see if I'm funny? Yeah. You know? I've asked it's these funny. producers about it and directors and stuff with these couple indies I did this summer, and it's like, they're like, no, like it works just fine. You know, we, we they do a great job off the tape and, and they come in and deliver and it's fine. And so like, it makes sense for these movie makers that the casting office is just obsolete now. It's kind of yeah. crazy. It's just this new world we live in. Yeah, but I do like the philosophy of I mean that is the job. My my girlfriend works with Michael Wilson. Yeah, you know? yeah, I, I work with Michael. He's like, yeah. you're a great auditioner, mm. and you can be a great actor. But he's like, if you're a great auditioner, mm. you're gonna get the job. Yeah, yeah, but it's he, also that that is the job. He has a great book, The Work of an Actor. Yep. It's so good. It's really possible to be a great great actor and a terrible Terrible auditioner absolutely it's like being really smart and being a bad test taker yeah Yeah. absolutely exactly it's the same thing the the test anxiety just gets to you because like think about it like acting is supposed to be acting music and just creativity is supposed to be so flowy you know Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be like an energy rigid it's supposed to be a vibe it's supposed to be Mm -hmm. like something that's happening in the air and like to do like an audition like very much like okay you get up in the morning you, like run your lines you know you get ready you like do your hair you know whatever and you get there and you meet the person it's very like rigid you know yeah. it's like all right we're gonna roll it and it's like it's like okay it's all happening now yeah but even down to like you know if, if you're doing a scene with somebody and and uh, then there's nothing worse than when you get an audition and there's like action within the scene oh i hate that you know and you're like i don't really know what to do because i don't want to just stand here doing nothing but at the same time it's like i, I can't pretend to do thing. this yeah. yeah and it's like but if i was on set right now and i could naturally grab that and do this and walk over here that changes the whole dynamic of the scene but if you're watching me just stand here and look straight mm-hmm. it's just boring yeah and it's it's do you remember sucks. your first audition First Ooh. ever audition oh no there's no way dude like or like i remember one of the auditions one of the tapes that I sent in from Florida was for so you were taping Tail with Harry Connick Jr. Yes, I remember Dolphin Tail. I had a yeah, couple yeah. of like uh, tapes from uh, Florida. Cozy, yeah. Cozy. I had a couple of those kinds of tapes from Florida that I sent in before I moved out here. Mm. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, you're from Florida. Where yeah, from? Uh, Orlando. Orlando, that's right. Wow. Yeah. You grew up at Disney World. Uh, yeah, pretty much like on property. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was, he I was, was closer born in the Magic Castle. <laughs> I was closer to Universal Studios. Actually. Oh, really? But uh, I'm gonna go there. Fitting. I'm gonna be playing a show with my band in Orlando on tour. It's cr- crazy. That's, oh, that's awesome. Congrats. I know. You guys are touring next month. Wow, that's awesome. It, it's crazy. Yeah, it's such a culmination of the past three years of work, and I can't believe it's, it. Still, it doesn't feel real. But Is it uh, like a venue tour or like? Yeah, it's like small two to five hundred cap venues. We're supporting this band TX two. And uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect. You know, we're going on tour for 15 dates. So that's three awesome. weeks. It's crazy. Okay, so uh, the, the, I was about to tell one story though. Yeah, go for about it. About the audition. Yeah, I was gonna say the, the dolphin audition. That's what I was, that was asking. About pantomiming auditions. Um, 
just this interesting story that I, I of this project I booked this summer, Grizzly Night that I mentioned earlier. It's like this um, this bear attack and this action scene, and the the one the the one of two audition scenes was actually the actual bear attack. Yeah, and so there's a lot going on and all this stuff. I'm like, how are we gonna do this? And you know, it's what you were talking about. Like, do I try to pantomime stuff or do I just kind of like not do that? Like what's what, and me and my coach, like we decided to like, just kind of go for it and do as much as we could. And in the script, I'm supposed to like climb up a tree and like get out of the way and like escape the bear. Right. Like how are we going to do that? You know, climb up a tree. It's like, I'm right here in the (laughs) room, you know? And we, we just kind of got creative and we put a chair like in the, in the scene. And I kind of just like got on top of the chair like this and just kind of like acted like I was in the tree. And I feel like it it just worked so well. And I feel like that was one of the things that got me the job. And it's like, you just got to kind of have to work with like what they give you. Exactly. Take a chance. That's a big thing in this business. Cause there's such a fine line though, because that could have looked ridiculous. Yeah. You know, if your performance wasn't perfect Mm. then it was like this could have looked strange right yeah yeah and there's like that fine line where it either looks like a legitimate tape or like a weird improv class that you're like pretending to do (laughs) stuff you know yeah i think that idea though of like taking risks is really big in the business and in life it's like you can't play it safe like you have to be willing to fail that's like a big thing that i was scared of for so long and especially as an artist it's like you have to be willing to fail. And even in life, if you're not an artist, it's like you're probably not growing if you're not failing. You're not trying hard enough if you're not yeah. failing. Yeah, so. absolutely. You have to, to fail to grow, which exactly. sucks, but you you learn a lot. Yeah, I feel like that's a crazier thing too. I mean, you've done enough comedy where it's like sometimes you, you read it and you're like, I don't know, like I feel like the joke might actually be here. Let me mm. try to see if I could sneak that yeah. in there and like get an extra laugh out of that portion of it. And sometimes when you just read it and you find like where your natural comedy would come from, sometimes it makes the scene yeah. even better. And then maybe in that audition room, that person's like, wow, I didn't even see that bit there about that. That's totally. hysterical. Let's move him That's forward. the beauty of multicam is because it's like the spacing is so kind of regular that there's so many spaces to like find those intricate and unique ways to find the funny and the comedy you know and you know us three have done so much of it like I feel like what we were talking about earlier it's like we have when whenever I like hang out with someone who's who's done multicam in like a big way and like Disney or Nick or whatever it's like I feel like we have this like understanding this common ground of like what we all went through you know (laughs) We also you, all try to get a joke in. Did, you know what yeah, I mean? Because you all had to try to get your joke the whole time. in. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you guys do live audiences? Yeah, about half the time. Half the so time. we had like a lot of special effects and action scenes with the whole superhero thing. So like half the time, we just didn't have the time for it. Yeah. But um, whenever we did, man, those things were That's awesome. so fun. And I grew up doing theater in Florida. So whenever we had live audiences, like you get the real reaction, you know, if something's not funny, like, you know, yeah. you know, and you change it and you, like you're saying, like you switch up the comedy every time you try to like, you know, find different ways to say the line. And that was for me, like one of the most fun parts of the job was how how different can I do this every yeah. time, you know? And when they would come in, the EPs would come in and give me seven different notes if I could deliver on all of them. Yeah. yeah. You know, that was like a, the challenge to me. Do you feel like when you do drama mm-hmm. that you have the same uh, opportunity, I would say, to change up on the day your... Uh, individual lines or things like that where you change up your performance or is it more of like a comedy thing because personally i feel like with comedy you can kind of try to change it up and Mm. you don't want it to get stale but with drama for me is like i feel like i i know that this is how it was supposed to be performed or something Mm. and i gotta stick to that i agree with that i i think with comedy there's a lot more room for interpretation i mean there's obviously room for interpretation with drama as well but i'm very new to drama like all of us have done mostly comedy and i'm trying to do drama i'm in acting class and it's super hard especially having a lot of like big nick disney uh acting habits you know i'm trying to like break myself of and i do feel like when i do drama like this this um this like suspense indie I did this summer, I feel like 
it was definitely the most dramatic thing that I've done. And when we would go over take after take, I do feel like what you're saying. It's like, I feel like it's this and I'm trying to get this. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm every take I'm trying to get a little closer to like what I think it is. Whereas comedy, I'm so comfortable with it. It's like, I'm going to go in, take one with like the strongest one that I think yeah. it is. I'm going to do that maybe one or two times. And then I'm going to explore and right. see what other things I can do. And like drama to me, at least now in this beginning stage is just, not that way for me i feel like i'm really trying to break through and find the honesty find the vulnerability especially as a man like it's super hard to be vulnerable and like share your feelings and you know cry in front of a bunch of people on yeah. set and that for me is something that i'm trying to like pull a lot of layers back and and find what really means something to jack you know yeah. and i feel like a lot of the classes that i did growing up I did like Deb Aquila's studio who studied under like Stella Adler. So it was like mm. super method and all this. And that just really didn't work for me. And I did Michael Wilson and that was also kind of like heady and it just didn't work for me. And, and it was all about the character. It was all about like, you have to know like what is happening in the scene and like in the movie and like in the character's life. And now I'm in Anthony Mandel's studio and it's all about me yeah like yeah. it's like a therapy session of like like what happened to jack you know when mm -hmm. i was young yeah. you know what i mean like who hurt me and like what what's going on in my head how do i how do i fit in this scene like where where do i live in it and it's just been working for me more than anything else that i've done and i'm so grateful to be in this school like i'm so excited to go like wednesday nights like it's like my, yeah my sanctuary because i really be. yeah and i see myself growing so much i've been in there since february and like this year has just been so awesome for me you know i i, I can't suggest more to people who have passions and whatever you want to do in life whether it's like creative writing or pottery or like you know just be in like a a curriculum i'm a big believer in like yeah. uh you know a structured sort of curriculum like going to school or whatever it's that's why i think it's so cool that you went to school like i would have loved to do that but i feel like at the opportunity just i just never even got close to it you i know? got lucky on timing though yeah you know because i i worked the first show i did i started when i was nine and then i worked through that show for four years worked with you for about four years mm -hmm. and then it literally set me up at 18 yeah it was like now what and it was like i can either just try to audition every single day and do these things but the the funny thing for me was like i didn't ever stop auditioning i never stopped trying to work it was just like well, i'll just go do both and see what happens you know i'd rather so go cool. do it than sit around and be like well i can't go to college because you know i might get an audition it was like i'll just go do it and if it yeah and i ended up doing a show for abc that i kind of reoccurred on for a while and it worked synced up with my college career and wow. I, I had no problem with it but yeah i was fortunate man because if i think for you i mean you finished at what 20 on 20 yeah, yeah so it's like you're i was kind of past you, it and then it'd be weird to go to college i you know. know it's like yeah I know it wouldn't have even been weird at that age, you know, especially now when I think I still have those thoughts. I think about everything, you know, I think about this age. I still am like, what if I went to school? You know, yeah. like, yeah. cause you know, I feel like we gave up all that, you know, like yeah. I didn't never went to high school. I moved out here when I was 13, about to go into seventh grade. Yeah. And you know, it, it's funny. We, we play high school all the time. Like we still play high school, yeah. I know. but we never went, you know, yeah. it's like when I was on the show, um, <laughs> you know, and I'd have lockers and I'd be in school and like, oh, I, I always thought it was so cool. It was oh, so cool I know, yeah. because that was like the closest thing we had. <laughs> yeah. That was the only like high school experience we had with like a fake principal and like yeah. pranks and like, I used to go home and visit my sisters at high schools and I was like, Oh, awesome. You guys have lockers. Like, <laughs> Dude, this is your so biology cool. room. And they're like, yeah, I fucking go in here every day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sucks. It's a miserable yeah, time. Hate it. But we had a bit on our show where I had to like, uh, a locker combo. I had to do yeah. the locker combo. Do it. I, the guy was like, "Yeah, just open it. The code's this." And I'm like, "I have no idea how that thing works." <laughs> and they were like, "Seriously?" And I was like, "I genuinely yeah. could not explain." You're like how right, that thing left, right, yeah. 32, and it's 31, still forty. Genuinely does not make sense. It's so funny. And it seems like a weird way of having to unlock a. Yeah, it's just uh, something that we have, you know, in common. We just didn't do these things. I know. You know these regular people things, and it's like I, I do kind of sometimes wish that i what that i did but then i talked to some people about it and they're like nah i didn't miss much. it's also yeah. always there it's it's always there you can always go to school you can always go back to school i think that 
I mean, I have not family school, members that went not high school. <laughs> you definitely like, should on high yeah, school. I, I wouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Yeah. No. You, you won't, won't be allowed back. Much. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe go to college, but, but university, yeah, for sure. Well, but yeah. college though, I mean, it kind of depends on what you're looking for though, because realistically, if you're looking, well, what are you to, going for? You know, that's what I'm saying. Is like for me, the biggest thing that I wanted to get from college was having friends, uh, living that college life of being there, uh, doing the fraternity thing, like just having fun with people my own age for the yeah. first time in my life. Right. And and sadly, like the school was kind of secondary. I mean, obviously like I took it seriously and I loved being there and I got to go for film, which I think was that's pretty amazing. Normal. Yeah, but it was like, I feel yeah, like that is for most school. people, right? It's yeah. like college is about learning who you are. Yeah. And that was the first time in my life where I got to be my own age. That's you know? so, such a good point. You know, yeah. like you were working so much as a kid and like you felt like, like I, I, I felt this a similar way. Like when COVID happened, a kind of point I was talking about earlier. It's like I feel like COVID was was my college for you. It's yeah. like you know you have to like take a step back and like wait. Like I've played this character so long. Yeah. And it's like you put this face on, and it's like you're this perfect little boy, and like you don't do anything bad. And it's like no, like that that's actually not that's actually not me. No. Yeah, like not who not. am I? You know what I mean? And that's what I'm sort of like trying to work on in class. Is like I wear this max character from the show like all the time like even in my life like in my auditions in my life and it's like it's formative it's it, weird yeah it lives in you. It, yeah and it's and it's like that's not who i am and yeah. and i'm really trying to to find like who is who is jack you know i feel like i've played this character so long and when you've done it for 10 plus years like i'm still doing it yeah i'm still playing him yeah and it just bleeds into everything that you do. And so I'm having to work really hard to, to be an individual, really. You know, I feel like you're always just kind of worried about messing up or, you know, people relying on you. Because, I mean, to, to lead a TV show when you're 15 years old, it's an insane thing, you know? I mean, that's an insane thing to have the pressure of everybody's there for you to Literally, do a good job. jobs are on the line yeah. because... yeah. If you suck or you quit, everyone's fired. Yeah, and if you screw up, you know, I mean, we've seen it countless times, uh, especially on our networks of people who... Uh, lost shows. Yeah, made poor yeah. choices yeah. And, and lost shows. And you're a kid. It's like, that's yes. the time you're supposed to you're make, gonna make a mistake. Yeah, you're going to make gonna gonna mistakes. Happen. All and those crew members they're... probably did the same thing, you know? Oh, yeah. And hopefully they're mistakes that are reconcilable, you know, yeah. because so much is riding on it. And it's not a normal thing yeah. for these... You know, I was 16, and like to have so much writing on your decisions as a, as a 16 year old when yeah. you know y you're you're flying high you know you're you're on disney you're nick like you're doing the thing that you came out here to do you're making more money than all the other 16 year olds you know yeah and you know you have everything at your fingertips you know you can do whatever you want and of course you're gonna make crazy decisions you know when you think of like and you think of like Bieber or like, you know, that's like the most, you know, yeah. um, extravagant sort of like farthest yeah. that can go. But yeah, we had our own little like kind of version of that, yeah. you know, growing up. And we had to really, I feel like, go the extra mile and work really hard to stay the pace, you know, yeah. at least for me, like, you know, I had so much I could do at my fingertips all the time. And I had to really like rely on like my love for the job and what what I because there was times in like season two and season three when I would kind of go off the rails a little bit but I kept it together you know yeah. I, I kept it together because I just was so grateful to be there and yeah. I loved everyone that was there like I don't know about you guys but like my when I reminisce about my 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 time on uh on the show it it was just the best time yeah of my life yeah and yeah. I mean you look you look back and you're like, oh, I would have loved to have gone to high school. But then I look back at those relationships and feelings I had on set and the people that we, I mean, like, I, I think it's always so funny that I played dominoes on set with our grips and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Bradley's like, we're throwing down money in the back. <laughs> yeah. like, you should just go like hang out with crafty and, yeah. and go shoot the shit with those guys. And yeah. They're like 40 year old guys that I'm learning life lessons from. Dude, yeah. Though, but anytime you feel like you wish you went to high school, ask any person who went to high school exactly, and they'd be yeah. like dude high school these, sucked yeah these it would kill it to be where we were <laughs> yeah. you know and i i do think that these experiences not not that they're more valuable but they're just as valuable it's just a totally. different life experience totally before totally. we let you go though yeah what was the uh along those lines because i'm just curious what mm -hmm. was like with those cool experiences that you got to do and mm -hmm. you reflect on it as a positive thing what was in your brain the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the 
coolest opportunity or the coolest experience you had because you were working on that show? That a, Poster. Yeah, you like that, that question. One. Yeah, you good like job. That one? Thank you. It's, it's a hard one. Um, We'll answer it. On the show, <laughs> pre-show, post-show. Pro- probably traveling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, honestly, like probably getting that world perspective as a 17-year-old. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think that perspective of, you know, here in America is not the only way that us humans do things. Yeah. It, it, it kind of takes you out of your own little bubble and it makes you much more down to earth and you know, I went to um, Argentina and Brazil. We did South America. We did England like tours, and Scotland. Like Was that press tours, or is it? I don't know what that is. Uh, what were you doing? Like you just oh sh- press the tours. Show? Uh, we did the KCAs down there. Oh okay. We we did the KCAs and oh, met, met, met the fans. That's oh, they they were crazy down there. Yeah. They were like insane. They yeah. were like so excited to see us and um, and just seeing the different ways that people people live, you know and after these experiences, my first couple of experiences going overseas, um, I continued to do that on my own time because I just saw the value in it so much. Um, but yeah, getting to do that, you know, for free, essentially, you yeah. know, them yeah. sending me, and, you know, that was that was the coolest part. I, sometimes I getting paid to even go sometimes getting paid to to do that, you know, it kind of it sparked this whole. Um, interest um, and intrigue in adventure and something different than what we do here. You know, I still love going places. You know, I've done a lot of places in Europe. I still haven't done anywhere in Asia. I'm really excited to do that. I feel yeah. like I've been to Thailand and it's unbelievable. Oh, yeah, it's I really want like, to. Also, the best food you ever had. For yeah, the best price ever. Yeah, it's Asia's. That's the only part of Asia I've been to, but I've been to Europe too. It's yeah, it's it's invaluable. Yeah, traveling. Yeah, the world is. We did Australia too when I was like eighteen. Awesome. Like that was crazy. So yeah, I think traveling, getting that opportunity to like see other parts of the world. Lots because as a seventeen-year-old, as a kid, it's like you only have the perspective of like your your country. You know, if you haven't yeah. like yeah. been anywhere else, and then you know, I feel like traveling when you're young, if you have the opportunity, if you have the means, is super um, beneficial and, and, and important. Yeah. yeah. That's a great answer, actually. Yeah. I think I probably would have gone with the same exact answer. Yeah. We might have to ask people that now. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing that's affected you most through your young career? No, it was like the most like valuable experience. Not yeah. affected you the most. Affected you. Like, like oh, you guys are saying the same thing. You. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brother's like, no, 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 no. no, no, no. Your way is weird. <laughs> Uh, Jack, man, thank you for doing this. this thank you guys. This is very fun. That was the quickest, like 40, 45 minutes. That was very quick. That was 45 minutes. Just about. Yeah. Minutes, yeah. Yeah. But thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. A lot of fun. Thank you guys. I'm going to pee my it. pants. Good so. to be back. <laughs> Thanks for uh, starting this off. Yeah. Wow. Easy. Very easy. First time back. Right back into it. One of I the felt. easiest interviews I feel like we've had. Yeah. He's also got a lot going on. Definitely of this show. Ready. The yeah. easiest interview we've ever done. Yeah. On this show. Well, I mean, when you have two different passions that are going pretty well at the same time, I'd I'd be pretty excited to talk about it too. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool to talk about or talk to somebody who grew up doing the same thing that we did, uh, but in such a different vein, you know, a different world almost, but it was the same thing. So there's a lot of similarities, a lot of differences, but it's cool because I mean, there were things we would travel with, with Disney and he was traveling with with Nick, Mm -hmm. but they were totally different things, you know? And I wanted to ask him too, like, you know, he said he had a lot of temptations and he was very aware that like he could have derailed the show had something yeah. gone wrong. I wanted to ask him, like we had, you had your mom, I had my grandma. That was like a big foundation piece. I wanted to see who that was for him. But I, we might have to have him back. Time. Yeah, I know. That was, it was too easy. I know. We'll have to have him back after he goes on tour. When yeah, that'll back. be a cool experience. It's almost like going can be interviewing a whole different person. I know. I want to know if he's going to go like over there flying or taking the bus tour. I feel like it does make you touring life is like. Did it feel good to do another thing. interview? Yeah, it does. It feels good to be back sitting in this chair. Even though it's not the same chair. Yeah. Just feels good to be sitting in a it's chair. It's comfy. Yeah, I just like sitting. And chatting. <laughs> <laughs> Shitting and chatting. Sitting and chatting. Uh, well, you know, for, for this episode, we're uh, just going to, you know, do a little outro of talking about the episode. But in the future, once these are released, we would love to start answering some questions something we talking love guys a little bit so much about doing this show is talking to the audience and kind of our way of being able to almost be face to face with you guys so um you know going on in the future we're gonna sit here at the the last bit of the show and improvise answer some questions maybe play uh improvise yeah a game 
see how many push-ups brad they can do but yeah play a game we might just do monopoly for the last 10 minutes yep i like i do like monopoly just one game that lasts like 30 episodes because it's a never-ending yeah, fucking yeah. game yeah the last five minutes of each episode are just a little five minute expert of uh monopoly that's great i can't wait for that yeah do they yeah. say fuck on smartless do they do that do they say fuck yeah yeah i think you're allowed to say fuck hmm didn't we say fuck I said, well, you we said, fuck. It, I guess I was just I, Look, to be honest with you, I say that word kind of often. But when, kind the of way, often? The, way, yeah, the way you just said that, the way you just said that made me feel like you it was such a dirty word. Fuck. You, you, you were like, do they say fuck? fuck? Like they're not listening to. Do they? What do you think? How many listeners do you think we're going to get? What at, least, at least four. But what, yeah, at least four. My mom, your grandma, my dad's over it. He and he's like, no, I don't like, he, I don't like just, that quality is shitty. Yeah, he, I don't yeah. want to listen to you guys talk anymore. I hear you, <laughs> yeah. I hear you enough of my drive Interviews home. Interviews suck. Um, but boring. you know, like how many people do you think are going to be like, I'm over these fucking guys? I hope all of them. I hope all of them yeah. what are over it, but they come back time. just to see what they're over. And maybe we snatch a few along the way. I'm yeah, excited at though. least 10 are like, you know what? They were kind of funny. At least 10, give it, a, give it a second episode. Yeah, the old college try. Yeah. All uh, right. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Jack Griffo. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Very uh, insightful, inspirational guy, I would say. Kind of makes yeah. you want to go try new things, doesn't it? Yeah, he's doing a lot of self-exploration. I, I definitely am due for qu quite a bit of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, you need to look I mean, inside. Yeah, I, I do. You know, get off the golf course and look inside more. But that's your side gig, you know? Why don't you join the Corn Fairy Tour? I am. I'm, I'm going to Q School next week. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's only like $20,000 to enter, and Q I think you get to shoot like... Eight, yeah, it's pre-Corn Fairy. Oh, I thought that was like QAnon or something like that. Yeah, so. no, it's um, it's the deep, dark side of the web that <laughs> yeah. you have to look up and you research. You have to apply to that? Wow, I yeah, you, you do. show up? No, no, you got to know all the conspiracies before you oh, get there. Oh, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. You have to answer it. It's like a test. Yeah. yeah, there was something else there. It wasn't a test. All right. Uh, all right. Well, we'll that see you just next week. Totally derailed. See you next week. Thanks for listening.